Oh yeah, baby. Meme finals, let's go. Spawning at the bottom right position here on game number one is the blue Zerg. It is IFU True Touch. Then as the teal Protoss in the 12 o'clock position, we do have SK's Bonnet. Yes, he has left the red clan and he's now part of SK. Uh, he jumps clans a lot recently, it's all good. <laughs> oh man, the clan hopper. He goes where, where Protoss skills are needed the most or something like that. But here we go, and uh, well, I mean the last the last match I casted between these guys was uh, was a best of seven show match for the Bombastic Star League, and Bonneth 4-0 True Touch, and it wasn't even close, he just absolutely dismantled him. It looked like a Korean versus a foreigner game. So yeah, let's see if True Touch has, uh, has learned any new tricks. And what's up? Man, is it just me or did that, does that tank and that vulture look bloody? Yeah, that vulture definitely looks bloody. That's dark, man. You can even see like the blood splatter on the floor, I think. Yeah, that's all, that's oil. Dude, the, dri the driver just got cut in half along with the vulture. Brutal War is a brutal game, man. Wait, what's, what's the dead thing that's above the vulture? Is that like a Valkyrie or something? I thought that was a tank, no? The tank is below. Wait, what? I think we're looking at different parts of the map. Oh. I'm looking at where the Overlord just went through. Yeah, I'm sure that's the second tank. Is that a second tank? That could be a second tank, I have no the idea. Vul wait, the Vulture's on the bottom. Oh, oh wait, oh. no, we are looking at different things. Okay, so there's there's a tank, and there's a thing, and then there's a Vulture, and then there's another tank, and like the cliff thing. Yeah, I, th I think they're all tanks. Minus the okay. Vulture, of course. Alright, fair enough. We see a gateway expand for Bonneth, well at least a gateway. He is keen on one base play. Oh man, is he gonna do the Reaver build? I love the Reaver build, it's so funny. And the Reaver build, of course, is where the uh, What Would Jadong Do meme was born, in fact. If anyone has no idea what I'm talking about, go check out uh, Bonneth vs. True Touch on Nostalgia. It is one of the recommended games on my stream. I believe it's actually the only VOD that has... Or actually, no, it's one of only two VODs that got the three-star recommendation <laughs> on my... Uh, sorry, on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so... That you guys was can certainly an interesting game. game. We do see the probe actually blocks the hatchery for quite a while. Fourlings are now out to push this probe back. Actually, six. Going into six lings. Is he going to try and bust through here? I don't think it will be a very wise choice to do so. There is a uh, there is a zealot on the ramp already. Yep. I'm still waiting to see what the tech structure is going to be here. And ooh, probe barely making it out here um, against the zergling. Two probes coming off to block. I still don't see a tech structure though from Bonneth. I guess if he's going for the robo, he doesn't quite have enough gas yet. It's looking very much like it could be the robo. Oh my god, yeah. it's robo. There we hey. go. One base reaver. Oh, that's actually a nice block with the probes and the zealot. Nice, nice catch on that probe though. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that worked. It looked like the um, the zealot didn't attack for a while for some reason. So not sure what really happened there. Maybe it was just out of range. Mm. Definitely possible. Meanwhile, the second probe actually sneaking out. The first probe is kind of stuck on the other side of the eggs at the left side, but obviously super easy to scout on this map because you can go in through all the back doors. But a lot of lings coming in here, they're gonna get a surround here against the Zealot and the Dragoon. There are six Zerglings and the Dragoon is gonna fall immediately here. Mistake from Bonneth, not walling that off completely, allowing the Zerglings in to get a surround. And True Dutch not only kills the Dragoon, but scouts the robotics facility. Yeah, that was such an important moment in the game. He's actually killed a couple of probes, I think, as well uh, in that engagement, so pretty good for him. What is he doing back at home? He doesn't have his lair on the way yet, not going for two hatch, actually adding his third hatch at his natural. Gonna cause that uh, semi-ball there actually to help against any possible oh. uh, zealot attacks. Mistake from True Dutch there though, for some reason running back towards the zealots, uh, losing one of his zerglings, and a Dragoon now gonna come chase down the last one. Thankfully for Bonneth, there was no follow-up zergling attack, or he could have potentially just died right there. But there is the support bay coming out for him, presumably his shuttle is halfway done now. Uh, in that uh, robotics facility, and we are going to see some crazy uh, Reaver Frass. How good is the defense going to be from True Touch? He's faced this many times before, guys. You know, interestingly, True Touch hasn't actually gone into any. Th oh, there we go. He adds the Hydra. Then I was going to say he seems to be waiting quite a bit to actually get the defense. 
uh, to actually deal with this. So I thought uh, maybe Shrewtouch had thought he'd maybe built a building, but didn't. But either way, Hydralis will be the answer to this here. Uh, how well will he be able to use it? It looks like a Zealot is actually uh, running up to the natural of True Touch. How much damage can they do? Some actually really nice link micro. He is taking down these Zealots. Oh man, it looks like uh, the two Zealots going to get uh, nine kills between them, although a couple of those might have been from the main base earlier. And ooh, going to get taken down, but Bond is doing as much damage as he can. A couple of Zerglings actually getting stuck in the back, it looks like, of the main base here. Meanwhile, Hydrodent has finished, will be able to start Hydro Production. Link's coming into counter, but you can see he's got the Zealot and Dragoon properly blocking this time, so no surround is going to happen. The Reaver should also be, yeah, the Reaver's now coming out as well. So even if there were Lings here, the Reaver obviously will be able to stop that. But True Touch actually gains information, he sees it finish now. Yeah, he also traded one Ling for one Scarab, which is a pretty good trade to make. Uh, it does actually delay the extra Scarabs coming out. The Shovel is flying across, of course. There is only one Hydralis back for defense right now. Can he get some more Hydrazel? Oh man, he's sending the Hydra to the north side as well, anticipating the shuttle coming in from the top side. Let's see how much it does. Two Zealots and a Dragoon is going to stop any number of Zerglings trying to bust up here. And here we go, the shuttle coming in through the cliff area. Overlord sees it, Hydra sees it. Where's it going to go? The Hydra's trying to intercept here. Now the thing is, the shuttle, the Reaver doesn't need to go straight for the drone line. It can also drop and kill some of these Hydras, but he's actually caught in a slightly awkward position. And not a single Scarab has been launched against those units. And it looks like actually the Zerglings break through somehow. Yeah, the Zerglings get into the main. They're going to try and take out as many probes as they can, but Bonnet doing a really good job actually pulling his probes back at the right time. A Reaver is back to defend, but there's even more Lings running straight up. Can they get the Reaver? That's a nice position for the Reaver, though. Difficult to get us around, although he's moving out a little bit now. He's got to be careful not to let the Reaver get surrounded. Three Hydras are coming in here. Where is the shuttle with the Reaver? Do you know where it is, Kicks? Oh, it's actually coming back. The Reaver and shuttle is coming back here. There's another Hydra, but the second Reaver is dropped, and he should be able to keep everything alive here. It looks like the, the first Reaver got zero damage done at True Touch's base. He's using it purely defensively now. Yeah, oh, he man. can't really afford to be too aggressive. There is a lot of links start the map. He's lost most of his ground units. Uh, just one Dragoon and one Zealot remain. They were the ones on the ramp before, I think. So, not doing too badly, but True Touch able now to just keep macroing up. He's adding more and more Hydralis. Is he going to go into a third base, or is he going to go all in here? I don't know, but Bonneth taking advantage of the map, able to get a free base at the top left. No way for True Touch to, to take that now unless he kills these eggs, and there will be plenty of warning for Bonneth that that's the case. Bonneth could even use the Reapers easily to kill the eggs on his side to allow his units to gain access. And look at this, the Lings, no way they can bust up this ram with two Reapers. I guess, though, True Touch does use that to check that the Reapers are there. Meanwhile, though, Speed Shuttle coming in. And it looks like two Hydras already died. This must be a third Reaver, I guess. Three Reavers already in the map. And now that is a third Reaver. Can he actually kill these Hydras? Can he pick it up? No, he doesn't. And he's going to not quite lose the shuttle. Yeah, the Reaver was actually on 13 kills before it died. So pretty good defense. They're not losing any drones. But the trouble is, True Touch, once again, he's still on two bases. His drone count at his natural is not very high. And he is going for his lair, so he's going to base lair, he's not going to try and expand. I guess the one problem he has is there's no real bases he can take, well, which won't get completely harassed down by the Reavers, so he's always forced into this aggression here by the play of Bonnet. The Hydras are taking down these eggs though. I don't think he has time to actually kill the Assimilators. If he kills both the Assimilators, the Hydras oh, can't get through anymore. So A Reaver's going to come in. That oh god. Luckily enough, True Touch notices in time. That could be very, very dangerous. He could have lost so many Hydra lists there. And a cannon on the way we now. We see some more Hydras coming in the front, though. There's, there is still a Reaver on the ramp, though. Weirdly, a uh, defensive one base Reaver isn't something you realistically want to be doing. But it's working out, because True Touch just isn't expanding. Man, this... I can't believe it. I didn't even realize Gold Rush is such a good map for this strategy, because you get the free base in the back after, uh, you know, the harassment fails. I mean, normally, you know, imagine this was Python. This is the map where Bonneth likes it. Okay, I guess technically you can take the island base, but this is just super, super nice here, super easy to defend. And, um, yeah, let's say he's getting goon range as well. Just gonna, uh, just gonna play it out from here. He's got his Stargate as well, just in case he needs some Corsairs for any, uh, any Muta switch that True Touch might be doing. And Bonneth should be in great shape here, I think. 
Yeah, it looks like Bonnet's actually even taking down the Assimilator with the cannon. Uh, it's gonna allow him to sort of completely close off that area. Now, the Spire is finally coming up for True Touch. He's likely gonna have to go into Mutas. Now, the trouble is, uh, I think that's actually Goon range. We only actually see Dragoons in his main base. There's not any other anti- Oh, actually, it must be plus one for the Corsairs. My bad. Completely missed the Stargate. But, uh, I mean, one, uh, one Stargate uh, Corsair isn't going to really save him too much against a really big swell of Mutalisks. I gotta say though, you know, True Touch is doing a great job stopping this Reaver Crass, once again deflecting a speed shuttle. Deflecting this speed shuttle is no joke. Uh, I mean, doing it with ground units in particular, and he might even try an intercept. Look at this, the Hydra's actually on an intercept path with this shuttle. I don't know if he's just poking the front with this, but he's doing a good job constantly testing the front. He's like, he, dude, he's like the, the, the Velociraptors in, uh, in Jurassic Park. You know, he's probing the front for weakness. He's seeing, where are the Reavers? Where can I attack? Where is he going to make a mistake? And there's been oh, very Bonica few so far! The... Oh, saving it with one hit remaining. Can he get away? Wow. That is so close, but he's he's actually blocked away from his main. He cannot get back to his main there. He's gonna try and go up by the natural. He doesn't know about the single Hydralisk in the natural right now. Oh, shut the loose, Oh, he gets it! Although it's Bonneth, there's already another shuttle with two Reavers, so... Oh, man. That, this shuttle is actually already quite damaged though, this was the earlier shuttle, but it looks like the two uh, guys who at the back have been killed. What this means guys, is that units can no longer pass through here except ghosts, and obviously there are no, not going to be any ghosts in this game, but there are going to be eight mutalisks now heading, are they going to go to the back expansion or to the main? There are. There is only one cannon here, one probe trapped behind to help stack Corsairs, but I don't know how many Corsairs he has, he's only got, no, oh he's got five Corsairs already, that's pretty good. I don't know what the point of killing his cannon is, he can't go through here anymore. <laughs> That's not gonna work anymore, True Touch. Maybe he's just testing it. <laughs> yeah, we see the five plus one Corsairs actually. Oh, they're not plus one yet, but they will be chasing down the Mulus. Actually, uh, saving the Mulus with the Hydros. Maybe this was the uh, purpose of that, just to make sure they were there to help against the Corsairs. But where is True Touch gonna expand? He's still not expanding. Yeah, I think True Touch is actually in some trouble right now. And this is so cool. This is a legit two Stargate Sair Reaver with Dragoon support. Double shuttle coming out here. Dragoon, Corsair, and Reaver gonna walk down this ramp, and it's gonna be very difficult for, for, for Trudus to deal with this. The Corsairs, though, flying over some Hydralisks. It looks like Trudus finally got the Sminner only outside his base, but that's not particularly useful. Can the Mutas come in here and snipe the Reavers, though, before the Corsairs get back? He's gonna try and snipe the shuttle. No! Gets one volley off and retreats. Doesn't want to risk it. But I don't think he's going to have another opportunity, because there's there's nine Corsairs on the field right now, Kicks. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, there's actually more Corsairs on the field than there are Mutas. Some of them are so badly damaged, a single Corsair shot can actually take them down, or at least a single volley. He's running away the best he can. And he does get away with his Mutalisks, at least. But he just hasn't done enough damage. This is the problem. When you oh. stay on two base for so long as Zerg in ZVP, you have to do damage with your Mutalisks. And there's actually so many Corsairs now that he actually just takes out five, uh, six Scourge going for the Corsairs without taking any damage. Oh man, he's just flying around now, killing off the Overlords. Gonna supply block True Touch here. The high, few Hydras that there are there are not gonna be able to do anything. There is a Queen's Nest, but no Hydras yet. A bunch of Scourge coming in. It looks like a couple of connections. Actually, some, some pretty good connections there. Are six uh, Corsairs do remain. But that is still too many for the Mutalisks to deal with, and the Hydra's just walking around impotently. They can't do anything right now. They, they yeah, just... Oh, man. I was going to say, someone in chat did point out that he is expanding, but I I mean, he's got the hatchery at the Mineral Only, but he's not mining from it, so I don't really count that as an expansion just yet. Uh, he's still just adding more and more Hydra's. Uh, only down to six Mutalisks now, trying to do some harass over in the top left, but there's cannons there. And if he gets caught out of uh, caught out of position, he could be in a lot of trouble now. It looks like Bonneth is actually going to try and go around the back. No, he's not. He's just moving across just to be safe. The Hydra is still chasing down the Corsairs, but just unable to do anything. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the Hydras are doing over there. For a second, I thought maybe he was going for some kind of crazy Doom Drop, but there are no Overlords here either. He actually went for a Queen. I was wondering why he had the Queen's and no Hive. I thought at first he couldn't afford it, but he could potentially be going for Ensnare on 
the Corsairs here, and Snare actually a very effective spell, reducing the movement speed and the attack speed by quite a significant amount. But here we go, the, the Hydra's coming in against the Dragoons. The Ensnare could also slow down the shuttles and make it easier for the Hydralisks to pick them off. By the way, Ensnare though does not affect Reavers, I believe, neither the move speed nor the attack speed. Yeah, and Sarah is very, very finicky. It attack, like, affects really weird units. Uh, I don't know if True Touch have been either watching Drone play or talking to Drone, but Drone has been droning on, uh, as yeah. the pun may say, about how good queens are for a very long time, and it looks like we've finally got the queen here. Indeed we do. There's a whole mass of overlords in the middle of the map as well. Gotta be super careful not to let the Corsairs find those. But here we go. Double Shuttle, Dragoon, Sare, Reaver. This is the composition. All we need now is a uh, is a Fleet Beacon. There's the Queen! Where's the Ensnare gonna hit? The Ensnare hits part of the Corsair's flock and two of the Reavers, but again, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure it doesn't affect at least the attack speed of those, although it appears to actually affect the move speed, interestingly enough. Huh. Yeah, it does. Only just so. Then again, Reavers looks so slow anyway. It's a counter-attack kick! Spell. He's going for the Lancer X! The Lancer X strat of just A moving into the opponent's base. He has nothing back home to actually defend against this. No lurkers, barely any units, nothing to contest the Reavers. He has to do critical damage or he will lose the game. Oh my god, I think this is actually the best possible move that Trudich could have done. He knows he had no way to actually contest the, the army head on here. There was no way for him to win straight up in a fight. So he's going for the base race situation, and he is actually the faster than the Dragoons are AFK. The Reavers are not protected right now. The, the Corsairs need to come in right now. The four Reavers, though, they're still barely alive. Everything is dying in the main base of both players. The Dragoons coming in here, but look how slow the Dragoons are. Who is going to win the base race? That is the question. The main base is in tatters for True Judge, but the same for Bonneth here. Now True Touch is going to build a building over in the bottom left base. The trouble is, his army are going to find it really hard to break through the eggs into the top left position. The Corsairs are suiciding! Kicks the Corsairs are suiciding! They're flying over the Hydralisks! There's only four of them left! And if the Corsairs suicide, then the Bermudas can potentially pick off the Reavers here. This game is actually insanely close right now. Oh He's not my god. The buildings in the main either. He's not left any units to kill them, so he's going for the base race, but he could actually get eliminated beforehand. But no Bonnet, adding so many cannons in his top left base. Oh man, he's rebuilt the Robo, he's built a bunch of cannons. It looks like one Reaver though does get picked off by Mutas here at the bottom left. The two shuttles coming in, the Dragoons coming in to the main base to finish it off. But in the same way that True Dutch can't actually send ground units to kill the top left, Bonneth can't send ground units to kill the bottom left, the, the bottom left, although he does have the two speed shuttles, so True Dutch just has to like deny the speed shuttles from getting down there, maybe, I guess that's the solution. He's sending all his hydras back here though. If he wins the engagement, this could be really huge. Yeah, he needs to be careful though. There is still, I believe, three Reavers alive in this shuttle. He needs to be careful, he can't lose track of the shuttle. Oh! He's gonna lose the shuttles. Nope, he's fine. So good. And this could be the final engagement, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why he's not focusing on the Reavers. That's a 17 kill Reaver. It's in red, red health. That's another 17 kill Reaver. And this is it. Who's going to win the engagement? It looks like Bonneth is going to take it down. He's going to lose one Reaver, but it doesn't matter. The Dragoons doing serious work. And True Touch loses his army for some reason, did not focus down the Reavers. The shuttles were damaged. The first Reaver was severely damaged, and he just let it live. Yeah, and the crazy thing is that wasn't even True Touch's whole army. He actually has another group of... Oh, oh my god, he's getting the shuttles! Oh my god, Kix. What is happening? We're going back to the start of the game, Sale. Both on one base, but Bonnet still has the two Reavers alive. The Reavers were not in the shuttles. That could have just saved him in the game. Oh my god, this situation is so weird! Bonneth rebuilding his cybernetic score, True Dutch has the base at the left side, he hasn't even brought all his drones in at the moment, he's got two more drones sitting on the outside, he's at 26 supply, at 66 supply. But he's coming in here, he's gonna get one more of the Reavers, but it's gonna cost him almost every last unit. It's only one Hydra lives to tell the tale here, after yeah, that insanity. Despite losing all the Corsairs before, he has four, and that was enough to kill the four Mulesks. It's gonna scout this base, and all Bonneth <laughs> has to do is go and kill this base, and he will win the game. But he's sending his units back home! Yep. He's There's not one, sure. He doesn't know. He doesn't... Yeah. 
Like, he, he can't know exactly how many units are left. Oh no, he's found the overlords of the Corsairs are coming to kill them. He found the overlords. Maybe he thinks there's a drop in here or something. Could be. Oh, we have a speed oh, shuttle. Yeah, speed shuttle will drop the Dragoons off in the new main base of True Touch. He is trying to rebuild his spawning pool. But other than that, he has no defense. There's actually two lings that he could use, but they're stuck outside the eggs. And I believe when this speed shuttle comes in, True Touch will have no choice but to tap out. What is the reaction? Is he going to pull his drones to try and hold on? Oh man, he is indeed. He's trying to get the drones around on the two Dragoons. Of course, they can micro all day against this. He has a few links and a Hydra on the map, but they actually can't get in, it seems. Although, no, he has drop tech, though. He can actually lift the uh, the, the Zerglings in here if he wants to, but he does kill one of oh. the Dragoons, and True Touch has left the game! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you game one of the meme finals in TL Open number five. I think that was a pretty good start. What do you guys think? I mean, it's got to be very frustrating because, um, like, he played that way better than the last two times he faced the strategy. You know, he had the nice ling run by after Bonneth made the mistake in the early game not blocking his ramp. He completely shut down the Reaper harass, and he's still lost. Like, what What else can you do? Yeah, I mean, he was... I, I'm completely speechless, because thinking about it, True Touch made the perfect decisions there, but it just wasn't enough, Bonneth. I mean, the, I think the major moment in the game was when he didn't focus down the Reavers, like you said. Yeah. When he didn't take out those Reavers, he lost the game. He lost so many Hydralisks. Hydralisks are just so good against Dragoons as well, so... Had he have taken down those Reavers quick enough, that could have been an entirely different outcome. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Kix. We don't even have time to call the positions because Bonneth, the Protoss player here at the 3 o'clock, is going for proxy gates, ladies and gentlemen. He is going for the ultimate tilter. Oh, boy. Bonneth knows how to beat True Touch. Bonneth just has True Touch's number. I think a lot of it comes down to entirely the mind games between these players. Now, is True Touch going to suspect this? Is he going to go for an early pull? If he goes for a 12 hatch here, I think he will just die. Kix, we saw two Zerg players today go three hatch before pool on this map. Now, there yeah, is but... an early drone coming out, and that makes me feel like he wants to go for the fast expand. Now, the trouble is, surely, surely True Touch, who did pick this map, would know the Bonneth may do something aggressive. He is down 0-1. And what's the best thing to do in a best of series when you're up? Just cheese, man. Like, you, what you what you got to lose? You can tug the series. It's all good. Wait, what is this scouting pattern from Wait. Touch? Oh my god, is he gonna proxy hatch? He's gonna do the larva build! I think he's doing the larva build. He's gonna proxy hatch Ling all in. Is this the larva oh, build? Wow. No, I he's doing the larva build against proxy gates! Oh no, True Touch, no. Not like this. This is like the ultimate Shine build as well. Shine has done this so many times over the years. Lava, of course, has picked this up and did do it in the ASL too. And he's even faking out that he's going to try and take the base. He actually nearly loses the drone to do it as well. <laughs> I'm not sure it matters. Even if he builds the proxy, proxy, uh, proxy hatchery, yeah, he can get some links over there. But what's he going to do about his main? Oh man, wait, this could also turn into a weird base race, because as you said, once that ha if he builds a sunken in his main, he can start, he can backstab with Zerglings, and that actually might do a good amount of damage. Bonneth has to know something is weird though. Like, this, what Bonneth sees in True Touch's base right now makes absolutely no sense. And I, assuming he saw that Larva game on this map in ASL, he can, he can possibly even guess that that's what's going on. But now the Zell comes in and now Truda just like, wait, what the heck is going on right now? Oh, oh boy. actually using the drone to try and micro down the Zell, not gonna work. He has no links, his spawning pool is not yet finished. The proxy hatchery isn't finished either. I think it actually finishes up exactly the same time as the spawning pool here. Does take out the probe, but has lost two drones. Spawning pool finishes. Ooh, Sunken's coming up. Oh man, here we go. There's a probe looking for the hatchery. He's looking for the hatchery at the top right. He knows that that's where Larva put the hatchery in the ASL match. That's the most likely location. He hasn't actually 
uh, scouted it just yet, or no, maybe he has actually. Looking from the minimap, he appears to have vision um, of that area, so he kind of knows here. And it looks like Zell's running back here, going to wall off the Zerg here on this ramp. Although again, since there's the back expansion, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, and also given the state of this game, it's even less of a big deal. But here we go. Can Bonneth actually stop this? He needs to bring Zealots back. He's bringing one Zealot back. Well, Bonneth has added a forge already. He's building a, a wall behind the minerals with the pylons. If he gets some cannons up, he is going to be perfectly fine. There's only four lings right now in the top right corner. Six lings now, soon to be eight. Is that going to be enough? He's actually got a Zealot on his ramp already. He's just yep. getting prepared for this perfectly. He's pulling two zealots back as well, so he's gonna he's gonna wall off True Touch at his own natural, and then he's gonna use his zealots to kill that proxy hatch. Are we gonna see a drill here though? A single drone push. Look at that push. Just a single drone is enough to push and make a gap for the zerglings, although he doesn't quite exploit it that well. Oh man, is he gonna kill the zealots? Oh my god, the zealots are going in to kill what? the lings at the proxy hatchery. Oh, and the, the Overlord actually gets too close to the cannon, almost dies, but there we go, two Zealots against something like eight Zerglings. Trudich was actually saving the Zerglings here at the top right because he didn't realize that the probe already saw the hatchery. And now he's going out. He, he did mine gas to get Zergling speed, so he will have Zergling speed, but he's going to need to use another drone bust on this ramp. And these Zealots need to run down to their buddies, though. Uh. This is so close, that. Zealot nearly goes down, but once again, wait, there's no cell. Oh, he's actually pulled the Zealot back to the cannon. I think this is the perfect choice to make. Once only... again, Bonneth finds himself in a position where as long as he defends, he's going to be perfectly fine. Oh, man. And it looks like actually Truda changes his mind. Instead of going for the attack on the main, he's going to pull back. He's going to surround these Zealots at the front. And if he can kill these Zealots and pick off the, the proxy gates, he will be able to pressure Bonneth. Bonneth won't, you know, he won't have any more gateways. He's just going to be camped on his main base, but the Zealot's actually just running straight in here. They're just gonna try and do as much damage as possible. There is a Sunken Colony though. I'm not sure this is the best idea because look at this True Touch now going for the gateways. Yeah, the gateways are gonna go down. This is gonna be a big problem for him. He's actually going for the pylon first. Perfect decision, but two of the Zealots actually pop out at the right time. Can he save the pylon? No, but will he kill the Lings very possibly? Yes, indeed. It's gonna be close. He needs to micro it. No, he does not. The rest of the Zerglings appear to be trying to bust down the ramp. There are only two wounded Zealots. It looks like Bonneth is just gonna leave the two injured Zealots and just evacuate with the remaining three. He's gonna abandon the ship here because he knows if he just camps on one base, he is still super far ahead. Look at this. He's going a robo, getting two more gateways, walling in this second cannon. And True Touch is still only on eight drones right now against yeah, true, way more probes. True Touch once again going super all in. If he can't kill Bonneth here with this all in, he's gonna be either so far behind or he will lose the game. Bonneth once again going back into this one base style that he actually did last game. So not really being set far, uh, set too far back actually by all of this. I think, I think uh, Bonneth should make a third cannon to be honest. Because the only way he loses this game is if True Touch kills him with Link right now. I would actually make a third cannon. I'm not 100% sure where he would make it, but I feel like that might be a good choice here. Yeah, maybe make it at the back. He actually does have an extra pylon. But these, oh. probes, these probes will block the cannon in. Look at that Zealot as well, completely blocking in that second cannon. Yep. Really nice positioning by Bonnet. Wow. Didn't need a third cannon at all. What a god. <laughs> and now he's getting the support bay. He's doing the same build. And we can see True Touch having to resume gas mining despite having a super low eco. Gonna have to get Hydralisks to deal with the eventual Reaver, but Bonneth seems to be in control. I don't know if he should move down the ramp though with these Zealots, that's pretty brave. Yeah, the big thing is the Lings, even if they get in his main, they can't really do anything. True Touch actually built some drones <laughs> from the proxy hatchery, transferring them back now to his main. Another one does go up. <laughs> what the? <laughs> That is actually amazing. They have to go all the way back cross map. Oh my god, that's that's actually awesome. What he should have done is actually mine some minerals out the natural of Bonneth and just super distance mine. <laughs> just steal some minerals since he's already on that side. Not yeah. a bad idea. Now these three zealots may not actually be enough to kill the hatchery. There is enough links here I think to get this around. Yep. Um, gonna do a good job taking down a good number of these Zerglings. 
Two more zealots even coming down to support their buddies here. I think they will actually be able to take down all these zerglings, and yeah, look at this. Forcing more zerglings, and remember, this is money that True Dutch is being forced to spend on zerglings to try and save this hatchery. He's gone the hydrogen, he's gone the lair. But is he going to lose the proxy hatchery? It's going to be quite close, I think. Where's the Reaver? The first Reaver's out. Corsairs as well. Everything off one base here. We're, we're back to, like, you know, before Bisu showed us the way with the fast expand. Everyone was just one basing all day. PBZ. It's back to the Stone Age. And he saves the hatchery sale. But I don't even know if it matters. The, it looks like the first Reaver is in the shot. The shot is moving across the map. Is True Touch going to be able to scale this? He did see the Robo before, so he should know this is coming. But yep. what does he have back at home to defend? He's actually adding his fire on at the back. He has the sunken already. But he's got no units at home. And there's even a Corsair here to escort the shuttle into the base. The Spire is only halfway done. Mutas obviously would help against this, but nowhere near in time. And here we go. The sunken not going to help either. Reaver coming in. Only two Hydras. He can't drop on the Sunken, or I guess he can. He's going to drop the Zealot first to tank some shots. He's going to take down the Hydralisks, possibly just take down the Sunken. He does. He takes down the Sunken straight away. Oh He's God. going after the Spire now as well. He's going to try and stop the Spire. Yeah, if he can stop the Spire, there is absolutely no way he can lose this game. And I mean, even using the minerals on that is a pretty good investment. Does kill the Spire. Has got most of the drones already. Not too many drones left for True Touch. Some lings are actually trying to go in behind the minerals to catch it, but just immediately going down. Oh man, the Spire wasn't even cancelled, Kicks. He killed it. And True Touch leaves game number two. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted the meme finals. This is the meme finals. Proxy Gates versus Proxy Hatch. It doesn't get any more meme-y than that. And we're not even done, this, guys, because this is a best of five. We have at least one more game to come. Either way, we do have in the top left position, the man down 2-0, possibly tilted. It is IFU's True Touch as the Brown Zerg. And at the top right, as the Red Protoss, it is Bonneth. He is one win away from his second Team Liquid Open victory. And uh, one win away from making it something like a 9-0 or a 10-0 record in a tournament games against True Touch in the uh, in the past few weeks. So well, let's see, can can True Touch break the curse here? I, it's supposed to be a Disney story, guys. This is actually great. See, if this was a Disney story, the first two games would happen like that. Then this would be like a long 40-minute game where the map is mined out and True Touch barely wins. And then he comes back in the next two games, right? This is how it goes. This is like the Rocky movie. All right, we're doing it. We're, we're writing the script here. If this was an anime, uh, it'd be like Dragon Ball. True Touch would be like, you think you have me defeated, but this isn't even my final form and like a Super Saiyan or something. <laughs> One weird thing I noticed about the uh, cameras at the beginning, I, I don't know if True Touch just didn't want to click on the bottom left base, but he actually manually just like let his mouse scroll down to the bottom left base. He didn't even use like the middle click. Oh. Like he's just, he's taking it easy, man. Seems good, seems good. You just gotta chill out a little bit uh, here for the third game. Just relax yourself. Looks like we got the, uh, the overpool coming out here from True Touch. And Gateway First Expand from Bonneth. Our first potentially normal game here in this best of five finals. Bonneth looking at the three o'clock, not seeing anything there, so he's gonna go bottom left. He's still gonna scout his opponent last, but not quite as slow as if he'd went straight to the bottom right, of course. Yeah, will Bonneth actually see the Overlord? I'm actually going to check his vision. Yes, he does. He saw the Overlord, but did he notice on his uh, on his minimap? It looks like he did. Wait, no, he checked for the creep. He didn't notice. Yep. So he does scout uh, True Touch a little bit later than he could have done. But what is True Touch going to do? True Touch has done two all-in so far, both on... I'd like to say they're like two base. Like The second one wasn't really a two base all-in, it was two hatch all-in. But... Is he going to go all in again? All ins just don't seem to work on Bonneth. It's because he's the master of the one base strats. Just can't stop this man and his reavers. But, uh, well, he's going to come in here. He's going to see a few lings being made. So normally the response from the Protoss in this case is you pull back your initial zealots. You wait until you got like three or four zealots. And then you go out, try and poke around a bit, see what the Zerg is up to, see if you can do some damage. We and... already see eight lings on the map. 
Ooh. Is he going for a Ling Burst? There's only two Zealots out on the map, there's not a wall yet. Indeed there is not. It's it's pretty normal to go for the Nexus and then the Forge. And oh, here actually, we go. Oh. Yeah, he, he's actually blocking his ramp already. He is perfectly prepared for this. Wow, that's pretty cute. That is very cute kicks. Interestingly, True Dutch taking the mineral only, so expanding towards the Protoss. He might regret that later, I guess we'll see. Meanwhile, Bonneth keeping the ramp blocked, only microing with the one cell at the front. He does not want the Lings to run in his main base. Wants to keep them at the natural. Very, very, uh, very, very good play there. And now he completes the wall with the Forge and will complete the wall off. Yeah, he does manage to get the probe, which is a small victory. He obviously has the latest uh, drone production, but look at this, there's another six lings in the main of True Touch. It looks like he is droning up now, though. Now, one interesting thing about this hatchery placement for the mineral only, this can lead to a Hydra Burst. Uh, we have seen players like Shine especially do three hatch Hydra yep. from this position right now, so is True Touch going to do it? I mean, he showed he likes to well. He is at least liking all in against Bonus, but I guess he's not liking it too much with how the games have been going. But is he going to all in again? There's no lair coming up just yet. He looks like he's just got lane speed, so he's just about to get enough money for the lair, gas-wise. Now, you know, a month or so ago, Eonzerg did show us that that was one of Bonnet's weaknesses, was just getting Hydra busted, but it feels like he's kind of uh, shored that up a little bit recently, you know, he's, he's prepared himself a little bit better, and he's got a nice uh, placement here at his natural, he's left a row for a second uh, row of cannons, um, okay. so he, he will be able to make plenty of cannons if he does sniff this out, and this is also one of the strengths of a gateway expand, is when you move out with these elves, you can see if there's Hydras. Yeah, the important thing to note is he got enough uh, gas for actually link speed. He's researching that, but he's pulled all guys off gas. He is not going for any more gas in this game. This is a three hatch ling all in, I believe. There's no hydra den, no gas has been mined. Actually, adding a fourth hatchery, so maybe that's just get the fourth of the hatchery, but a little bit quicker. But there's just so many links on the map, and so many zealots as well. Yeah, so this this is normally what you get as Zerg when you're going for like a six hatch with a four lair. Oh man, nice control here from Bonnet. Still four zealots alive. Can he take down the rest of the Zerglings? I think the Zerg should win this. You can see how damaged these zealots are. Um, but yeah, True, True Dutch has definitely done this before. Getting for that fast link speed and then going for uh, five or six hatcheries for his lair. Going for that Hydra Den. Now that has been proven vulnerable, slightly vulnerable to, for example, like the, the two Corsair, two DT, mass speed lot. Uh, uh, attack that Bonneth has done uh, in the past, but we'll see how he can hold this here. And he's going for a bit of a counterattack with speedings, but we do see some blocking with two probes. There's a probe hiding right there behind the gateway, so I don't think the Zerglings can get through right now. We're gonna see Corsair DT this game, Sale. He is not, well, at least Corsair High Templar. He is not going for the Robo. The first alteration that we've seen, apart from the first expand, of course, from Bonneth in this series. By the way, I just realized that probe, because it's hiding behind the gateway, I don't think True Dutch can even click that with the Zerglings. Like, if you wanted to bust through there and kill the probe, it's so hard to actually click that probe. I didn't even realize there was a probe there until I... Right? Yeah. See? That's actually that's really cool. cool. <laughs> and now there's a Zella there, and that's nearly as camouflaged. <laughs> That is an interesting technique. That that's like the kind of technique I you know, I, I used to use on like these crazy UMS maps like cat and mouse or something. You could just hide stuff under buildings and uh, and the other guy couldn't click on it, so he couldn't kill you. It's pretty cool. Well it's like uh, putting a, an overlord over a burrowed lurker, that is incredibly annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so it's hard to actually click on it. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> we see the force. First course error. It does scout the fact there is now five hatcheries and a lair. Uh, True Touch has actually been building drones throughout this as well. He's not going all in. And Evo Chamber does go up to help wall off at his third base. And he does have a single Hydralisk uh, attacking this forge. Yep, um, but these are just putting a little bit of pressure on early. You can see the Zells coming out to just uh, scare them away as he adds additional cannons. Bonnet should get, you know, High Templars and Storm in time. In fact, he's even just gonna run them down with the slow Zell. It's gonna chase them away. Um, but actually, interestingly, no Templar Archives yet. I'm slightly surprised by that and slightly concerned, actually, as well, because 
you know, with this delayed lair build, you get the, the mass hydras out a little bit faster than normal. You can see the lair is just now finished, but no spire uh, just yet. But yeah, oh man, oh, Bonneth also getting a little bit caught with these Corsairs. Yeah, the important thing is though, there's five zealots, six zealots actually running into the third base. There's no sunken yet, no hydras to defend. He's gonna try and take down the evolution chamber. Interesting snipe decision here. He's going for it, he's right clicked it, and there goes the Evo Chamber. Any upgrade there, presumably the plus one range attack for Hydras would have been uh, would have been researched there, would have been upgraded there. One Corsair does fall, two do remain, but very interesting snipe there from Bonnet before moving back. He is adding another cannon, you can see, because he's got a delayed, quite a delayed Templar Archives actually, adding more cannons, adding more uh, gateways, but he's got to try and skirmish in the middle of the map, because if he gets stuck back in his natural, the Hydras are going to obliterate him. Yeah, now the crazy thing is, uh, while that engagement was going on at the third base, Bonith actually dived in with the Corsairs again, getting a couple of Overlords, which does supply block True Touch, only now unsupply blocking himself, but does, have, does he have enough cannons to hold on here? He's got plus one speed loss kicks. Plus one has finished for him, so he manages to take down a lot of the Zerglings. Four cannons now finished. It's gonna be quite close. These Zealots need to not take free damage though from the Hydralis. And the, th the funny thing is, if True Touch breaks down the wall, that actually makes it easier for the Zealots to run out and attack him. And interestingly also, look at this, the Corsairs making sure there are no Overlords here. So True so Bonneth actually, excuse me, could actually just make a couple of DTs to stop this. He doesn't even need to wait for the storm. Yeah, the forge is going to go down, but as plus one has already finished, that isn't as uh, isn't as effective as, as it could have been a little bit earlier. And as you do see in other games, looks like the corsairs still trying to be annoying, still trying to scout everything they can. The corsairs actually have three kills between them. And there's actually six overlords sat in exactly the same place right now. If he had a couple extra corsairs, he could uh, definitely take the corsairs out for an overlord dinner. Yeah, that would be very nice for him, but I think he's spending his money just on these, uh, on the Templars, of course. Corsairs are actually quite expensive on gas, they're, I believe 100 gas each. Um, so in, in this early game on the two base, you gotta, you gotta really manage your gas in PvZ, how you're gonna spend it, whether you want more Corsairs, more Templars, uh, all that good jazz. And the Corsairs, though, do scout this 9 o'clock base for True Touch. What is the response gonna be, be for Bonnet? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 gateways! He's going for a super hardcore two base attack here. He's going to try and kill Bonneth, or sorry, kill True Touch, or possibly do significant damage in response to this. Yeah, now the interesting thing about taking this 9 o'clock base is it doesn't actually free you up to um, get another base. There's not really that much room for stack defense. Uh, oh! Maybe getting the bottom left main would be better. That was a nice storm. The Hydras try and go in for the snipe, but Bonneth unleashes both storms and is able to even. Uh, morph into the Archon before the Hydras can uh, can pick either of them off, so good value there for for Bonnet. But the question is, can he break through here? There's some, some SimCity going on, although the Sunkins are actually on the wrong side of the SimCity <laughs> if the Zealots were to attack from the top side. But the 8 gate pump is going to be insane here uh, from Bonnet. There was an Overlord that just died in the top right. I'm not sure if he actually saw that, but True Dutch should be should be a little bit concerned about this. Yeah, Bonnet needs to be careful though, he can't afford to throw too many units away. The power is going to be in the in the fact of his uh, 8 gateway pump. Now there is a lot of Hydras coming out of all the Zerg bases right now, heading over to the bridges. And it looks like rather than going for this 2 base all in, Bonnet is actually going to expand to his mineral only. Very interesting. I mean, <clears throat> technically it's, it's not completely all in. I guess it's closer to like a 6 pact in TVP. It's not really all in, but you you probably want to do some damage with that, put some pressure on, because of course, you know, True Dutch's fourth base is already finished, and Protoss's third is only just coming up now. He is going to skirmish near the third base. You can see True Dutch is using small groups of Hydras here and there to uh, to, to allow him to more easily dodge the storm. So you can see that that storm not really doing too much for Bonneth. But he's, he's get, getting up in the Dragoon count though, that's pretty scary. And he's got plus one attack finished, he's probably got his plus two uh, well on the way here from that forge at the top right. And these bases are super close, look how close the Zerg base is to the Protoss base. Yeah, this is going to be very hard, it's almost like uh, watching a crazy UMS map where both players fall next to each other. This high ground is going to help True Touch to no end though, but he's got to be careful. Storms on this high ground are going to do a lot of damage. 
One random Dragoon actually getting stuck on the high ground there. The, the Hydra's trying to just buy a little bit of time, just trying to poke in the back. Here we go! Moving in here, a complete whiff on the first storm. I think doing more damage to that Dragoon than to any of the Zerg units. And it looks like Bonneth is not even going to try and fight up here, because there's, there's Lurkers on the high ground. There is. He's going to have to pull back, Neil. The weird thing is, by doing this, he's actually locked himself into his three bases. It's going to be very hard to push out if Kutash can get enough Lurkers. We're finally seeing a fairly even game in this series. Well, it definitely looks even for the time being, but Bonneth has uh, something like a 40 supply lead, which is kind of okay if Trudet plays it defensively. He's going for the op snipe. Can he get it? No, he cannot. And he's going to lose two of his lurkers here at the backside. Was just trying to get a good uh, position. He's going to fight a little bit in the middle of the map, but again, losing another lurker here. And Bonneth can actually just walk out this side and go for that 9 o'clock base. He's got to be slightly careful about his mineral only. He does have one High Templar with two storms available, almost three actually. Uh, Bonneth getting that energy upgrade for his High Templar is relatively early in this game. So he will have a ton of storm energy. Yeah, unfortunately for um, Burning City on Zerg, for True Touch, he has had some move lords out in the middle of the map, trying to go for those op snipes. He hasn't managed to do it. Only one sunken, actually defending this bottom left base. Units coming in from all sides. Can he get the good enough surround? Can he trap the Protoss army? Actually getting two of the uh, two of the High Templar at the back. He's not targeting though. A storm goes down. Is this going to be enough to break through? Ah, the big storm on the bottom clump here. He needs a couple more storm here. He picks off the front lurker of his units inside the nine o'clock base. It looks like Bonneth is going to hold and he is going to take down True Judge's army in the middle of the map. Not only will the army fall, but the base will fall. And also look at this Bonneth expanding right next to the Zerg base here at the 12 o'clock. No fear from Bonneth. He's even double expanding. He's taking the three. Yeah and the 12, and he is so far ahead, double the supply right now, 142 to 73, plus two attack did finish, and I think, yeah, only plus one from True Touch, since he did get that evolution chamber sniped so early on, that is definitely coming into play here, but it looks like True Touch might this time get it, but no reinforcing cells are coming in to save the day. Yeah, I think there's too many Protoss units here, what an amazing engagement by Bonneth, takes out the army once again of True Touch, now, it, how is True Touch going to be able to break out this base again? He's going to either have to go over this high ground or go over the bridges. This is the problem with not taking an extra natural. You have nowhere to retreat to, really. He's just completely stuck back on his three bases. Yep. And here we go. Protoss army rolling up onto the high ground. This time, instead of attacking low ground to high ground, as he was from the right side, he's attacking high ground to low ground. The Argon might get sniped off here straight away. The, there is a spore colony to push the observers away, but there's no lurkers on the ground, so it doesn't even matter. And Trudach down to just 53 supply, but it looks like there's no more storms here left in the army. Five more energy for this Templar to get a storm, but is it even going to matter? The Zealots and Dragoons running through the base. There's even a storm drop at the back of the natural kicks. Bonneth, even despite winning the game on the ground, is going for more harassment, although for some reason the, the shuttle doesn't even drop anything. It looks like, oh, it's a it's DT drop, teams. that's what it is. Oh, this is just the ultimate kick in the teeth, knowing you're winning anyway, just securing that win with that extra bit of molly task. Now, are we going to see a GG in the final from True Touch, or is he just going to leave the game, losing all of his macro hatches, losing his evolution chamber again? No units on the field, 43 supply. True Touch has left the game. <laughs> GG! Or not. What would J Dong do? Again, taking out True Touch in a 3 0 victory. Yes, indeed. So. Bonneth taking him down in the meme finals. Bonneth, the first two-time Team Liquid Open champion, ladies and gentlemen, will take home $100. True Judge, though, making it to second, takes home $60. Very well played as well. And the other two semifinalists will take home $20 each. This is all very kindly, of course, sponsored by Liquipedia. Uh, do check it out. It's a wonderful resource. I use it to follow uh, tournaments all the time. Um, even for things like uh, like the international, which you know I'm not, I don't follow Dota that much, but it was all uh, nicely laid out for me there as well. And uh, yeah, thank you guys all for watching, and uh, thanks to Kicks for the co-casting. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, and of course, thank you to all the players who did sign up and played their games today. It's been very fun.